several days ago, it was explained that we'd been gathering together since 1989. During those years, many, many, many hundreds of stories have been told. But it has to be made clear that those stories have formed links in a chain, but a chain that has no beginning or no end. And maybe momentously and auspiciously, as these things happen to coincide with cosmic events, there is a closing of a link in the chain that's been occurring over these last months. It began with the question, what is it that happens when the movement of life meets the stillness, the presence, that has been brought about in our life. And it's ended with the question, what is a mystic? But there are several stories that have been told long, long ago, but one of them serves to close this link, and the other serves to open the link that will continue as the days go on. The first story is about a certain great Sufi shape, who you might call also a mystic. Many people came to him, even sultans and emperors and kings sought his wisdom and his insight. And one day he received a message from a certain sultan that his presence was required at his court because the sultan was expecting a visit from an ambassador of a visiting of a neighboring kingdom and he wanted the sheikh to be present at this very very difficult time because the kingdoms were at war but when the message came to the sufi sheikh requesting his presence at the court, he replied, with regret, I am unable to be present at your court because the air in this place is conducive to my health and since it cannot be bottled, I am not able to attend. But of course, the sultan was very, very angry. But a few months later, as it happened, the sultan was sitting in his throne room when somehow an assassin found his way through a window of his palace and was about to kill him when the Sufi sheikh entered the throne room and was able to intervene and save the sultan from a certain death. Now, the sultan said to the Sufi sheikh, I'm very grateful for you saving my life, but I'm also still angry with you at the discourtesy you showed by not answering my request to attend. Sufi Sheikh turned to the Sultan and said, it is the courtesy of and duty of those who know to be at the right place, at the right place time and not awaiting ambassadors who are not going to arrive because the meeting of the ambassador was cancelled. This sums up for us or closes that link in this chain of stories that began with the question, what is it that happens 
when stillness and movement meet. And ends with, what is a mystic? And in this story, it's summed up for us. In a way, but you, in your own way, will understand. The second story, which begins the new link in our chain, is a story again of a Sufi. There was a certain dervish, and he'd been roaming the world, seeking knowledge. His face was blackened by the sun, and his patchwork robe was ragged. And he was walking down the road when a certain merchant noticed him. And seeing him with his ragged cloak and his blackened face, the merchant had the perception that this was a wandering slave. So he asked the dervish, are you a slave? And the dervish answered, yes. I've been looking for my master for many a long year. Well, the merchant said, I have a need of assistance. I will take you. And so the dervish became a slave to the merchant for many years. But when the merchant asked the dervish's name, he had no name. So the merchant gave him a name which translated to good, because he could see that he was a peaceful man. But after some years of service to the merchant, the merchant felt guilty about his exploitation of this gentle man. So he said, I don't know who you are or what your name is, but I set you free. Now, during those years, the dervish had learned the art of weaving. So, when he left the merchant, he was called Good Weaver. The dervish, still dressed in his patched work robe, went on the road towards Mecca, a direct path, you might say. And this dervish became the great teacher of some of the greatest Sufi sheikhs. During these years, when he had no name and was treated as a slave, he refined all that he was, and he indeed became a teacher of the teachers. The question was asked several months or maybe weeks ago, and now it's become a very important question for us. When we are no longer the pencil with which God writes, as Mother Teresa said, or we are no longer the hole in the flute through which God plays, as the great poet Hafiz has said. What are we then? When we are not the pencil with which God writes, nor the hole in the flute through which God plays, what are we? This question is left with us for us to pursue 
for when we return to come back together again. And we'll see, because it's another link in this endless chain, and this chain and its links is made up of the stories that have the possibility of dismantling all, not just our impressions of words, not just taking away from us what we think a teacher is or a master is or a do-gooder is or an angel is or a sheikh is or a mystic is, but to experience what we are when we're no longer the pencil or the hole.